But you know, one of the big things that I see is how many kids are being diagnosed with ADHD today? Right? It's off the charts. How different are those symptoms from sleep apnea in children? So this is where we talk about in adults, the way you're gonna be able to tell a lot of adults are, um, are having apnea. You know, they're gasping, they're waking up choking, or, but what are their symptoms? They're gonna have that, oh gosh doc, I'm exhausted all day long. I can sleep four hours, I can sleep 10 hours, but no matter how much I sleep, I just wanna sleep more. You know, they're fatigued throughout the day. They're snoring, they're just exhausted, whether it's right away throughout the day. They have to have 12 cups of coffee just to make it through the day, and by the time they get home, they can fall asleep just sitting anywhere. Kids are the opposite. They're gonna get super hyperactive. They're gonna become that, disorder, that behavior issues. Oftentimes, kids who are, una who are not well slept, they're gonna be those behavior problem kids acting out in school or the big issues that the, uh, kids, that the teachers see in school as a result of not sleeping because they're not able to focus and function throughout the day. These, the symptoms almost mirror each other exactly in pediatric sleep apnea versus ADHD. This is not easy to determine the difference. So what about it when we start talking about factors related to sleep apnea in children with attention deficit disorder? As many as 30% of children who have sleep apnea also have ADHD. So they're so similar. I've read it that anywhere between 25 and 50% of children who have ADHD also have sleep apnea. So they're so related and so closely mirrored to each other that we have to be careful about it. You know, scientific and clinical evidence uh, shows that the similarities between ADHD and OSA effectiveness or, or effects, you know, they are suggesting that sleep screening mandatory before starting sleep, uh, before starting stimulant drugs for kids. Holy cow, what if we didn't have to give kids medications? And I know this goes against big pharma, but what if we could treat the actual reason kids are having these symptoms rather than medicating them through this? What if we could make these kids healthier rather than needing to keep them constantly in the healthcare system? These things are so close that we have to be careful.